Okay, guys, so earlier today, I made a lecture for another class, and it consisted of like a PowerPoint video similar to what I did for y'all last week, and, and the file was so large, it took like six hours to upload and counting. It hasn't uploaded yet. So for um, chain roll, which is what we're fixing to look at, um, I'm going to make it into two different parts, and it'll mostly be just audio, so the file isn't as large. So. FYI, don't do that. Bye. Okay, for the chain rule, which is this section, we're basically looking at derivatives of composition of functions. In other words, we have one function inside of the other. So for this, I think it's really important to notice this function right here, m of x. Um, m of x is made up of two functions. It is made up of f of x and g of x. And for purposes of the lesson, it's really important to notice which one is on the inside, which one is on the outside. If you look carefully, g of x is on the inside. So that's the inside function. f of x is the outside function. For this, we're again looking at a composition of functions, but I want you to guess, using this, which one is the inside and which one is the outside. It says right here that it's f of g of x. So g of x is the inside function, f of x is the outside function. So give yourself a minute and write down which one you think is the inside function and which one's the outside function. So I think x squared minus 3 is the inside function right here, and I think that square root is the outside function. We haven't talked a lot about trig functions, but that still won't affect this. What do you think is the inside function and the outside function? Now, a lot of times this can be really um, intimidating for students, so I want you to first look at h of x and tell me what kind of functions you see there. Do you see an x to the fourth and a sine function? And do you see a power function to the 21st? So if you're seeing all that, you're seeing multiple functions. So the inside function is actually all of x to the fourth plus three sine x. The outside function is the power function, so it's just x to the 21st. So we have two functions, the inside and the outside. So now our next question is, how do we find, or could we find, the derivative of, of the composition function? How do we find a derivative? Do we just do the power rule part? Do we just look at this? Do we need to look at all of this on the inside too? So that's what we're going to get to next. So we're going to look at the power rule, and we're going to look at this. Is the power rule still valid if we replace x with another function? In other words, if we have a composition of functions, will it still work? Okay, so now we're going to try the power rule. So there's a couple of different ways. When we're looking at this derivative, are we going to do the power rule? Or are we going to do the inside? Because there's two different power rules. There's the inside, there's the outside. So what is going to be the derivative of this? So let's try some things. Well, will the derivative, what if we just did the derivative of the 100? So it's 100 and then the new power is 99. Or is it do the 100, new power 99, and take the derivative of the inside? Or is it take the power, new power is 99, and then we have the derivative of the inside. 
Well, it turns out that the right answer of these three is the last one. When you're finding the derivative of a composition of function, you go outside in. You go to the outside, and then you do the inside. So outside derivative, inside derivative, and you multiply them. That's how you do it. So now we're going to look at some examples. This slide is asking exactly what the last one did, except for you could actually test it. So um, you have f of x, which is a composition of functions again. You have an inside function u of x to a power. So they're asking which of these three is the derivative. Do you take the derivative of the power only and leave the inside alone? Do you do the derivative of the power and the derivative of the inside? Or do you do the last one? And the last one is our answer. So we have the power first, leave the inside alone, multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay. So you take the outside power, multiply by the derivative of the inside. So let's work it. So f of x equals 2x squared raised to the third power. Note that this equals 8x to the six. So we could find the derivative of 8x to the six. So let's do that. So f of x, if we simplify that, 2 cubed is 8 x squared cubed is x to the 6, and the derivative of that is 48 x to the 5th. So let's check it. Derivative, go outside in. So what's the thing on the very outside? It's the 3. So it's a power, so we bring down the power. We leave the inside alone for now. Our new power is 1 less. Then we multiply. Now we take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2x squared is 4x. And if we multiply that together, we have 3 times 4x to the 4th times 4x. So we get 48x to the 5th. So that's the answer. This one's a little more complex. And at first it looks like, oh, this isn't. Uh, a composition of functions. But if you look closely, you will see a composition of functions. First, I would ask you to rewrite this. I would um, rewrite this, leave 2 alone, it's just a, just a constant. But square root, it's 8x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So hopefully now you see it as the chain rule, because we have a power which is a function, and another function on the inside. So to find the derivative, we go outside in. So you bring, what do I do with the constant of 2 here? What do I do with constants? That's right, I bring them down. So I have my constant 2, and then I'm going to take the derivative of the power, so it's 1 half, leave the inside alone, The new power is 1 less, 1 half minus 1, so negative 1 half. Now I multiply. So I've already taken care of the 1 half. Now I take care of the 8x plus 1. So the derivative of 8x squared plus 1 is 16x. So right there, I have my derivatives. So the 2 I bring down, the derivative of the 1 half power first, and then the derivative of the inside, which is 8x squared plus 1 second. So outside in, power is on the outside, 8x squared plus 1 is on the inside. And then you can simplify um, if you want to. So I could, this 2 will cancel with that 2. And this final answer would be 16x 
over square root of 8x squared plus 1 because it's to the negative 1 half power. And that would be our final answer. Okay, again, hopefully you see two different functions. We have something to a power on the outside, and then we have a polynomial on the inside. So to find the derivative, we first worry about that power on the outside, which is 60. So we bring down our power. We'll leave the inside alone because we're working on the outside derivative first, and its power is 59. And now we multiply, and we do the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of 2x squared is 4x. The derivative of minus 4x is minus 4, and the derivative of plus 1 is 0. So we're done with that one. Well, let's look at the bottom one. g of x is the combination of 3x squared plus 4x to the fifth. So again, we have a outside power and we have an inside function. So we have two functions. So dg dx or g prime of x equals, we first worry about the outside. So we bring down that power, leave the inside alone. And the new power is one less. And then we multiply and we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So 3x squared, the derivative of that is 6x. Derivative of 4x is plus 4. And that is our answer. Could we simplify both of these? Yes, we could multiply 60 um, through by 4x minus 4 in the top one. So we could multiply this 60 with 4x minus 4. And on the bottom one, we can multiply 5 with 6x plus 4. I'm going to leave them alone for now. Okay, this slide has three different problems on it, and all of them are kind of a refresher problem. For the first one, we have 8e to the 4x cubed. Now, at first, it doesn't, it looks like there's a lot of things going on, and there actually is. For one thing, we have a constant, which is fine, you just bring down constants. Secondly, we have e, which is a function, and then also we have this 4x cubed which is a function. So which one's on the outside? Which one's on the inside? That can be difficult to tell at first. So let's look at the derivative. So the derivative, what do we do with the constant of 8? We just bring it down. There's our 8. Then we're going to take the derivative of e. Well, the derivative of e is e, right? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the derivative of e to the 4x cubed is e to the 4x cubed. And now we multiply. And so we've brought down our constant, and that's multiplied by our e to the 4x cubed. But what we haven't done is taken the derivative of 4x cubed, and the derivative of 4x cubed is 12x squared. So we could multiply all of this through and done 12 times 8, which is 76, or 96, and had an x squared e to the 4x if you want to, but you could leave it too. Um, now let's look at the second one. This one has a lot going on. We have a natural log right here. And we have 3x to 3x to the fifth plus 2 right there. So to find g prime of x, we're going to have to differentiate that, differentiate that. So first we're going to go with natural log. The derivative of natural log is 1 over the argument. Well, what is the argument? The argument here is 3x to the fifth plus 2. So we took the derivative of natural log. Now we need to multiply that by the derivative of the argument. So the derivative of 3x to the fifth is 15x to the fourth. So if we simplify this, our answer, final answer is 15x to the fourth over 3x to the fifth plus 2. And here we wouldn't cancel x to the fourth with the x to the fifth because of the plus 2.
you can't do anything there. Okay, next thing is the derivative of 2 raised to the 5x to the 7 plus 4. So dm dx is, we got two different functions here. One thing we have is we have the 2. That's our base. Then we also have the 5x to the 7th plus 4. So let's take care of the 2 first. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x times natural log of the base, e. The derivative of 2 to the x is 2 to whatever it is, which in this case is 5x to the 7th plus 4 times natural log of the base. So we've taken care of the 2, but we haven't taken care of the derivative of 5x to the 7th plus 4. The derivative of 5x to the 7th plus 4 is 35x to the 6th. And there is our final answer. This concludes the first part of chain rule. Um, there are 13 problems on my math lab for the entire lesson. So what I would advise is go to my math lab and look under homework 15 and try to work at least maybe um, four or five of them just to get you started.